episode of Critical Ship Reviews. This is the show where I will critically or brutally review people's ships. And we're gonna start with a simple walk around and then we're gonna check the interior and stuff and we're gonna test the ship in atmosphere or gravity and then I'm gonna give the ship a score based on uh, certain categories and in the end I'm gonna give my suggestions on how the ship can probably be improved and made more efficient so yeah now I gonna like repeat that long intro every week by the way, this is the Enforcer by Stellar who told me about his ship from my comment section. Honestly, the rest of this review is probably gonna be in robot voice, so just kinda bear with it. There, much better now. So as you can see there are connectors on pistons with buttons on the sides of the ship. I don't have the Frostbite DLC, so those doors didn't get pasted for me, but it doesn't matter just pretend they're there. Double doors for airlock, ship is symmetrical. The amount of lights here. So these are the armory and the bathroom, with doors. Of course they gotta have doors. Who needs PCU anyway? Decent amount of locker storage. Cargo containers, store block, and contracts block. Right. This is one of the entrances to the engineering room. Programmable blocks there. Large reactors. Rotating light during emergency or something. Timer blocks. Now let's access the rest of engineering. Those gyros shouldn't be sitting on light armor blocks so close together. Cargo containers there. and the big ones here. I don't get why you need two entrances to engineering. This is the way to the hangar bay. One connector, a camera, interior turrets, and vent. A set of buttons there on top. Probably to open and close the hangar bay's doors, and to pressurize and depressurize. We're going to the bridge now. Jump drives as floor by the way, which is fine, saves PCU, some interior turrets in the bridge. And that's the meeting table with a projector. And spotlight. There are hangar doors between the layers of windows by the way. Could have saved like a thousand PCU if you just use another layer of window. And this is the spawn room with medical room, cryopods, and stuff. Vending machine there. Well, crew cabin. So four people can sleep in this ship. So why is there eight desks around the table? Gonna test how it handles in space now. It accelerates well, holy mother of fur that awful endurance. It turns well for a ship this size. Testing the rocket launchers.
Alright so now I'm gonna do a quick planetary test, then we'll continue to the scoring where I'm also gonna mention more details regarding the ship's internal parts. Testing acceleration now, note that the bottom big hydrogen thrusters are off. Checking if it still accelerates well without the ion thrusters in atmosphere. Yab. Now without the bottom atmospheric thrusters. Still okay. Now with only the bottom atmospheric thrusters without the hydrogen thrusters. Not okay. But am fast. Note that the bottom large hydrogen thrusters are on now. Alright combat test against static ground target now, just to test maneuverability. The ship has welders and projection, and in survival they don't work the way they do in creative, just keep that in mind, this test is mostly for maneuverability test. I forgot to transfer ship ownership to me. That was okay for a ship this size. The amount of stuff that's broken, not including things that got completely blown up. The amount of batteries, will comment more on this during the scoring segment. Okay, so there's gonna be 10 categories on how this ship is scored. Guns per PCU effectiveness. Operational environment and ease of movement. Endurance. Pilot protection. Ship general protection. Pilot first person visibility. Functionalities. Cargo carrying capacity. Special functionalities and ease of use. And maneuverability. 
then I will give my subjective aesthetic score. And finally my opinion on how it can improve, and my personal opinion, it gets 2.5 out of 10 point for guns per PCU effectiveness, because it only has 24 turrets at 5 2k PCU, and many of them are blocked substantially by armor blocks which give them horrible line of sights, it does has some interior turrets and a forward firing rocket launchers, which help the score a bit otherwise it would have been 2 out of 10. It gets 10 out of 10 in operational environment and ease of movement because it can operate in planets, moons and space, and is jump capable. It gets 1 in endurance because it can only do full thrust for less than a minute if it runs out of uranium, and it consumes a lot of uranium. The hydrogen endurance is also really bad, it has few large hydrogen tanks and some smaller one which is about the equivalent of 9 large hydro tanks which would only last this ship a few minutes at full thrust. Pilot protection is 10 out of 10, because while it has windows for the bridge, many parts around the bridge are heavy armor and the front has many layers of heavy armor and other stuff. Ship general protection is 10 out of 10, because it's a mix of heavy armor and light armor which would normally be 8.75 out of 10, but it does have layers in excess of them. Pilot first person visibility is 1 out of 10, it has side windows which don't even give a line of sight forward, please note that cameras don't count toward this scoring category. Functionalities is 10 out of 10, it has almost everything but it is missing an important function which is drilling but it compensates with other functionalities. Cargo carrying capacity is 10 out of 10. It should be able to carry 5.2 megaton of cargo at 52,000 PCU, and it's able to though at a very high material cost for the downward large hydrogen thrusters. Special functionalities and ease of use is 2 out of 10. It's supposed to be a battle-capable mobile base sort of ship, which it fulfills in its level of protection, but the very low endurance, bad combat efficiency, PCU inefficiency, excess need of hard-to-process materials and hard-to-make components makes it a very hard sell for any real survival player or group of players. The moment something break or it gets damaged from battle, it would be a logistical and technical nightmare to try and fix it. Maneuverability is 10 out of 10 for a ship this size, though it does come at a very high material and PCU cost. So overall it gets 66.5 point out of 100, which is not that bad. This ship would have been much better if it was more efficient, though I wouldn't personally use it because the overall design is inherently wasn't made to be efficient but I can see people using it if they like the aesthetic design. I give this ship a B in aesthetic because it does look good and have somewhat a clear design direction, though it's missing some details which you'd find in top-of-the-line aesthetic ships. Now my suggestions. My suggestions would be to 1. Remove ion thrusters entirely or reduce them drastically, they're very expensive in materials and PCU, and take very long to make which contribute greatly to the very low ease of use and horrible PCU effectiveness, while only being usable in space. Just make the ship mainly hydrogen based, and have very few ion thrusters only for emergencies. 2. Remove the welders or reduce them to only fix decoys. They are a PCU hog, work very differently in survival, requires a constant availability of materials to work properly, and contribute greatly to the horrible PCU effectiveness and complexity of build. 3. Remove excess doors. You can easily save hundreds of PCU by removing excess doors, remove two from the engineering entrances, remove the armory and bathroom doors, and remove the door into the medical room or crew cabin and replace them with passage. 4. Remove excess hangar doors. Just use another layer of window they're strong enough and would save you about 1000 PCU. 5. Remove pistons, just use the connectors and gears without pistons. 6. Remove excess antennas. You'll almost never need these extra antennas. 7. Remove excess oxygen tanks. You'll only need like two oxygen tanks for a ship this size, they'll last you basically forever and you'll save a lot of PCU. 8. Remove excess lights. Just use fewer lights with increased intensity and range. 9. Add more hydrogen tanks or replace the smaller hydrogen tanks with large hydrogen tanks. Use the space you'd get from removing the ion thrusters, you'll need at least 40 to 50 for a ship this size, and ideally 80 to 100, 
but if you can't fit them in any extra hydrogen would be nice considering how low the endurance is currently. 10 Add Drills Much more efficient and small ship drills are a joke especially for a ship this size, would increase the ease of use a lot. 11 Add Batteries Even without the ion thrusters, considering how many jump drives there is in the ship, having some extra batteries would be nice. 12 Add More H2-02 Gens you'll need it to really stockpile the hydrogen tanks. 13. Reduce large hydro thrusters. They are giant resource hog, but since you need the bottom ones for cargo lifting capability, maybe remove one from the back. 14. Reduce or relocate decoy, especially the ones that are too close to each other. 15. Remove programmable blocks. Or at least as a feasible survival version variant, because most survival servers don't have scripts enabled. 16. Possibly add more refineries and assemblers. Considering how big the ship is and its purpose as a mobile base, having one or two extra refineries and assemblers won't hurt. After all these you'll save at least 10-15k PCU.